Hello all. In this video, let's have a look at a spur gate design. I'm going to use a simple method to design this gear. And before starting the design, we need to understand certain things about gears. The first one is module. Module gives us the information on the size of the gear. It indicates how big or small a gear is. We have backlash. Backlash is the clearance between two gate teeth. I mean the tooth of two different gears which are in mating. Then we have tooth depth. Tooth depth is the distance between the tip circle and the root circle. The circle passing through these edges is the tip circle and the circle passing through edges through these edges is the root circle and the distance between these two is tooth depth. Pressure angle is the angle at which pressure on one gate tooth is passed to the other gate tooth which are in mating. Pitch point is the point where two gears meet. Here we have pitch point and the circle passing through this pitch point is nothing but pitch circle. We are going to use pitch circle for the design and then we have some variables and equations. So for this design we need to create or define some variables and then we also need to define some equations. Based on these equations we are going to design the gear. Let's go ahead and start the design. So for this design, I'm going to define all the variables first and then start the design process. So tools, to create variables or equations, we need to go to tools and then equations. Here under global variables, I'm going to define some variables such as number of teeth. For this particular design, I'm going to use this value as 25 and module. So I'm going to use module as 1.5 for this. Then we have root, sorry, bow diameter. It's going to be 10 mm. Then we have another constant, which is pressure angle. So pressure angle for gears these days is 20 degrees. Earlier it used to be 14.5 degrees, but now it's 20 degrees. Now it's time to write the equations. So the first equation is for outer diameter or outer circle diameter. Outer diameter. And the equation for this is number of teeth plus 2 times module. So I'm going to use open parenthesis number of teeth plus two close parenthesis times module while entering the equation make sure that you're giving proper spaces so that solidworks understands what exactly you meant and if the equation is correct you will see this green mark here just click ok you can see the updated value based on the equation we have pitch diameter or pitch circle diameter and that is number of teeth times module okay also we have backlash or simply clearance And the equation for that is 0 0.3 times module. Arc length, arc length's equation is module times pi divided by 2 plus backlash. So arc length, open parenthesis and then open parenthesis, module. times pi divided by 2 plus backlash so we are getting an error here so let's have a look at what's going wrong 
so we forgot to include a parenthesis a closing parenthesis now i think it's okay yeah as you can see the value is updated here fillet radius that is 0 0.38 times module and the last one we have here is tooth depth so for tooth depth we are going to use an if condition because tooth depth changes with change in the value of module if the value of module is 1.25 or less than that then the tooth depth is going to be 2.4 times the module if it is more than 1.25 then the tooth depth is going to be 2.25 times the module so to satisfy that condition we are going to use an if statement or simply if you know the value of your module let's say if you're going to use module of more than 1.25 all the times for your design you can simply use 2.25 times module as the value for tooth depth or as the equation for tooth depth or if you are not sure that whether you're going to use module of greater than 1.25 or less than 1.25 you can simply use this condition here i'm going to use this condition so to the depth condition is if module less than or equals to 1.25 comma module times 2.4 comma which means else module module times 2.25 okay now because i took the value as 1.5 solidworks used 2.25 times module as the formula for this tooth depth let's say if i'm going to use one one here instead of 1.5 you can see sorry if i'm going to use module as one you can see the change in the value of tooth depth which is 2.4 times module which is 2.4 again so i'm going to change it back to 1.5 and by this you can simply say that everything is linked here click ok now it's time to start the design as we are done with defining all the variables and equations it's time to start the design the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to use front plane and i'm going to draw two circles the first circle is for bore diameter or simply the bore and the second circle is outer circle smart dimension here to link the dimension to a variable simply press equals to first and then go to global variables this one is bore diameter so i'm going to enter bore diameter here and click on ok if you see this sigma mark here that means the dimension is linked to the variable if you don't see it that means that it is not linked click ok you can see this red mark here if it is linked and smart dimension this one is going to be outer diameter equals to global variables outer diameter or simply you can type the details here like you can simply type outer and then you can see the options click ok so these two are linked to the variables okay as the sketch is fully defined i'm gonna go to features and use external boss or base and i want the thickness of the gear to be 10 mm so i'm gonna click ok here now we have the basic structure which is a cylindrical structure for the gear all we have to do is we have to cut the teeth now to do that go normal to the surface now i'm normal to the surface i'm gonna draw a center line now so i'm gonna draw a center line to the quadrant point 
and uh, now I'm gonna draw three different circles the first circle is the root circle the second one is the pitch circle and the third one is gonna be outer circle you can also use convert entities for the outer circle and then you can use offset entities or you can simply uh, copy the circles and give distance between them there are a number of ways to do this go to smart dimension so we are going to start from the outer circle as the circles diameter is equals to outer diameter I'm gonna link it to outer diameter okay then we have pitch circle we also have variable for pitch circle diameter so I'm gonna use that variable which is pitch diameter okay but we don't have any variable for the root circle which gives the dimension for the root circle but we have distance between the root circle and the tip circle as tooth depth so I'm going to use that distance to fully define the sketch so this value is going to be tooth depth equals to tooth depth okay now the sketch is fully defined I'm going to make this a construction circle now I'm going to draw a circle sorry an arc here somewhat like this and mirror entities for mirror about select the center line here okay I'm gonna draw a center line between the arc and this center point of the circle and and I'm gonna draw another center line which is coincidental to this arc from anywhere on this line draw a line which is coincidental to the arc now it's time to add relations the first one is going to be the center point on this arc press control and select this line make it coincident okay and then we have this arc and this line tangential to each other and this arc is tangent to this line here now here we have the pressure angle the angle between this line and this line smart dimension so we have the angle between this line and this line as pressure angle so i'm going to link it to the variable global variable pressure angle which is 20 okay now trim entities uh, using power trim i'm going to trim all the circles here except this part okay now the sketch is not yet defined to make it fully defined we need to specify the arc length here so we have the arc length but if i'm going to select smart dimension and select this arc it will show us the radius value instead of the arc length to get the arc length select smart dimension select this end point here press ctrl keep pressing it and select the other point and then select this arc you can see an arc symbol on top of the dimension link it to arc length here okay now the sketch is fully defined and we have the profile for cut between two teeth so go to features select extruded cut and under end condition instead of blind I'm going to use through all because if I'm going to change the thickness of the gear it will still cut the whole shape so or the whole object so I'm gonna press ok 
now we have the cut between two teeth what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add fillets now keep the constant size fillet selected select this edge and select this edge here and for the fillet radius press equals to and link it to fillet radius global variable click OK now that we are done with adding fillets it's time for us to use circular pattern to get the full gate design circular pattern and for direction one select this circle or select this circle it doesn't matter as long as you're giving the proper direction so i'm going to select this circle as you can see under features the fillet is already selected so we can see the fillet pattern here under the number of instances make sure that equal spacing is selected and the angle is 360 degrees for the number of instances i'm going to link it to the global variable number of teeth so the reason for linking this is if we change any variable the whole design will automatically get updated based on the inputs and for features first i'm going to click ok and for features as fillet is already selected we need to select cut extrude as well if fillet let's say the fillet is not selected here just select fillet and cut extrude so that you can see the pattern click ok now we have the gear design here i'm going to specify material now let's say this is a plastic gear so i'm going to use abs plastic as the material abs apply close let's go ahead and change the values for the variables i'm going to go to equations so let's say uh, the number of teeth is 40 as you can see the number of teeth is updated here and the module is still the same if i change the module here if i change the module here this will get automatically updated so i'm going to make this module as one and hit enter when i hit enter you can see the change the gear size is reduced because we are using a lesser module value if i make it somewhere around like three you can see a bigger gear here and for 1.25 you can see a smaller gear changes we are making here it will change over here as well so let's go ahead and change the pressure angle here so i'm going to make it 14.5 as you can see with change in angle we got a small change here so i'm going to change it back to 20 you can observe the changes here and if i make it 14.5 It's getting broader I'm gonna change it back to 20 and uh, both diameter it doesn't matter if I just change it to 20 this is going to get increased so this will get increased I'm gonna change it back to 10 and this too 1.5 okay so by following this simple method you can create a spur gear thanks for watching the video if you like the video subscribe to the channel for more tutorials on solidworks also i'm going to upload some nx tutorials as well so stay tuned take care bye bye